have been stabbings and you've ignored us. There has been a measles outbreak and you've ignored us. There has been sex work and human trafficking and you've ignored us. And now there have been two murders on your watch. The people of New York City are angry at the surge of migrant crime in their own neighborhoods. But isn't this what they voted for? And will this change their vote in the upcoming election? Well, in this video, we're gonna break it all down. Welcome back to Devore Darkens Show. My name is Devore Darkens. You already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people like you and me. Now, New York City is a sanctuary city when it comes to immigration, meaning people are coming over the border and they are making their way to New York City because Mayor Eric Adams have come out publicly and stated, hey, you guys are more than welcome. We will pay you benefits. We will give you a place to stay. But I digress. Here's the problem. In Clinton Hill, which is a neighborhood in Brooklyn, is just fed up. They've had it up to here because more crime has been happening because there is a shelter there where it's about 4,000 migrants living in that shelter. The issue is not that they're living there. The issue is the crime that is happening because they are living there. So before I go any further, let's play this video. A community in Brooklyn tonight coming together asking for help. They say migrant shelters in their neighborhood are leading to violence and bringing in dangerous gang members. And just this past weekend, three people were shot, two of them died. Eyewitness News reporter Jim Dolan with more on what community members are asking for. In Clinton Hill, migrants from a 4,000 bed shelter nearby fill the sidewalks. They sit on park benches, on stoops and curbs, under the BQE overpass. So many people crowded in here, residents feared what was coming. We have been witnessing the escalation in violence on the street and in the community for months now. We've been pleading with the mayor, um, as we've seen increased violence, that this was going to be inevitable. And on Sunday night, it came. Two people were murdered here, a third critically injured, just outside one of the two adjacent shelters in Clinton Hill. It is a neighborhood now pleading for help. Residents came together tonight to demand the city provide more protection for them now and move to downsize the two enormous and crowded migrant shelters in Clinton Hill. There is simply no universe where you can cram 4,000 vulnerable people together safely. Do you believe us now? How many more murders will it take? Some here are frightened now just to go outside. Now it feels like that whole and section that's doing that. and that's what is just not available to the community asking our local elected anymore. So our parks are not available to can't go there. anymore. Search out you and give us a list of all of the you can't go to the that parks. there are. Police say the man in this video is responsible for the two Sunday night murders. In the video, he appears to be putting a gun in his waistband. The mayor today didn't offer much hope, saying police are looking at a violent Venezuelan street gang as the people behind the shootings. They're extremely dangerous. We're dealing with violent individuals that are not representative of the overwhelming number of people who are coming here. Um, as migrant asylum seekers. No one has yet been arrested for those murders on Sunday night, and that definitely hasn't made anyone here feel any safer. Police say they know who they're looking for. They just haven't found him yet. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? And listen, the, the initial reaction from a political standpoint is, isn't this what you voted for, right? That This is why I want to continue to, to do videos like this because I really believe people do not understand the consequences of how they are voting, not just on the local level, but also on the federal level, right? And Mayor Adams, clearly his hands are tied. There's only so much he can do because he put himself and New York City in this position by publicly coming out and stating, yes, you guys are welcome. But here's the deal. The reason why they're crossing the border in the first place is because the federal government allows it, meaning the people who are responsible for the security and the legislation on the border is the federal government, not the state level. So people are, they're gonna come over, right? And then they get bused to these sanctuary cities and then they're housed in these shelters 
And that costs money, that costs time, that costs resources. And not only that, crime also goes up because these people do not understand our communities. They do not understand our society. They do not understand what is allowed. And I'm not talking about, you know, someone who's, you know, 56 years old and he brought his wife and his kids. We're talking about people who are part of gangs. They could care less about our country. And so these citizens are getting fed up and they are getting angry. And that brings me to this clip. They're not legal. If they were legal, they need to pay taxes. What do you think is going to happen with the migrant crisis here in New York City? Uh, it's getting bad because they're also next to my house and they piss on my door. I could tell that they're gang lords. I mean, they're tattooed up to head to toe. The people pissing on my door, they're tattooed up head to toe. And they're not, there's no law against illegal mi migrants committing crimes. So again, it's lawlessness, non-payment of taxes, siphoning all our money to their native countries, and it's just killing our economy. Eric Adams just said he's going to give 4,000 migrants jobs. That means 4,000 civilians have less jobs. It's just not fair to Americans. It's getting scary. Right now, you know, people in the Bronx are getting attacked. People Upper East Side, two of them just got attacked. And it's illegal to buy mace. It's illegal to protect yourself. I've, I've, been, I've lived here 50 years. And this is not fair that we, have, we feel unsafe in our homeland. And our own country is not defending us. And there's nobody to protect us. The police can do nothing. They told us they can do nothing because there's no law against them. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? And obviously this is shocking these neighborhoods, not just in New York City, but also in Chicago. Mayor Brandon Johnson is absolutely under fire for this and San Francisco as well. But the real question is, will this change people's vote when the election comes around in November? Now, in my heart of hearts, I'd like to think it will. However, it's going to be based on how fed up they really are because we only make decisions from a place of emotion. And if the citizens of New York are emotional enough to where they hate what Mayor Adams has done, what President Biden has done, and the border czar Kamala Harris has done, which leads me to this clip. It is my testimony that the border is secure. The president have worked very hard to implement a strategy when it comes to the border that is humane, safe, and, and has orderly enforcement. Things are going at the border, sir. Much better, than, much, much better than you all expected. <laughs> we have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. We have responded with a model approach that has proven to work. We have taken unprecedented action over the past year and a half to secure our border. And we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. We're working to make sure it's safe and orderly and humane. The border is closed. We agree that uh, the border is secure. We're executing a comprehensive strategy to secure our borders. One of our highest priorities is to ensure that we have a secure border. And that is what we are doing. We are stopping the flow at the border. The border is secure the border is not secure and even though they just recently came out and said that they closed the border people are still illegally crossing over the border so the question still remains will people finally go to the election in november and change their vote because they actually want results a part of me thinks some people will but i think the vast majority will not change and the reason why is because the media and the Democrats have been very effective at playing identity politics and putting fear in the minds of everyday Americans. There are people out there that fear President Trump more than they fear illegal gangs from other countries. I mean, it's it's really a sickness of the mind, the woke mind virus. I would throw that in there as well. That That's what's going on. People have become programmed and conditioned to look at an American citizen and see that person who was the president already, who showed you that he wasn't going to start another war and that there was no wars and 13 Marines did not die under his watch and that everybody prospered and the economy continued to grow and be great. He showed that, but people are so delusional. They look past all that and they keep listening to what the Democrats have been telling them that this man is dangerous. I mean, how many times can you continue to say that when someone who's living in New York City is dealing with this crime issue, I want you to think about where you live. What if there was a shelter that opened up two blocks away and 4,000 people moved in? You don't have a problem with that? 
You don't have concerns about security. Would you leave your kids outside in front of that shelter? Would you leave your door unlocked if you were a block away from that shelter? But see, the Democrats don't care. They want more people to come over the border. So as I wrap up this video today, I want to say this to you. When it comes to this migrant issue and this crime that is happening, you know, it, it's what you vote for, right? You, you have to take the good and the bad. People believe they are doing good by voting for Mayor Adams, Brandon Johnson, Gavin Newsom, or a Kamala Harris. They believe that they are doing good, but they don't understand the bad that comes with their policies. I'm a firm believer that liberal and progressive policies have great intentions. Great intentions. Yes, this country was founded on immigration. Let them all come in. You know, we want to take care of everybody. Great intention. Bad outcome. Because our logistics, our infrastructure, the finances, the health care, and every other serious category that governs this country is not set up to take on 20 million illegals. It just isn't. And if a city like New York City has the budget they do, they can barely even handle it. Chicago can't even handle it. San Francisco can't even handle it. The country can't handle it. So the next time you go out there and you're truly thinking about, man, who should I vote for? Think about the policies and the results of those policies, the historic results of those policies. And by the way, just for you guys out there who love history, President Obama did a mass deportation in this country. He deported more illegals than any other president, and it's not even close. Just for you guys out there. But will this change people's vote in November? Hopefully these people are doing research. Hopefully they are being told what it really is. And hopefully they do experience things like this so they can rethink their decisions. That's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you guys think about this violence that is continuing to increase in these sanctuary cities? San Francisco, Chicago, New York City. What if you were living a block away from one of those shelters? What do you think about these policies? Do they work or do they not? Do you think it will change people's votes? I want to know your answers and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.